Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja Divedi and in this segment today we are going to talk about data localization. This topic is important from the perspective of prelims and also from the perspective of GS mains papers. So let's begin with the topics of discussion that we are going to look at. First of all, we will talk about the news. Then we will discuss in brief about the background of the entire scenario. We will also talk about the impact of this move which is in the news. We will also talk about data localization, about it, the payment and settlement system in India, vision 2019 to 2021, what is it? And also about the challenges related to data localization, the way forward and in the last of the segment, I am going to ask you a main based question for answer writing practice. So let's begin with why is it in the news. Now, the Reserve Bank of India has taken a tough stance on Master. Mastercard, the second issuer, the second largest issuer of cards in India, it is now prohibited for masters to take on board new customers from the 22nd of July. It includes not only prepaid cards, but also credit cards and debit cards. We will analyze this news in detail. Let's move on and talk about the background of it. Background in the sense, the scenario, and then we will move on to which committees or which suggestions have suggested that such, such moves could be justified. First, MasterCard had not complied with the rules requiring foreign cards network to store data on Indian payments exclusively in India. So what RBI was suggesting since the year 2018, it was pursuing different agencies which worked not in India but over the borders, over the seas in order to store data which pertains to the Indian soil on Indian soil itself. Masters did not comply with that rules and now Masters is bearing the brunt of it. Also, there has been no response from the global payment service provider. MasterCard will be prohibited from issuing debit, credit or prepaid cards to customers in India from 22nd July. So, if we talk about the stand of Masters, the opinion of Masters, it said that it did give all the reports and details about whatever transaction or whatever inputs were being generated from the Indian soil. And it is pretty upset and disappointed with RBI's statement on the 14th of July that is to prohibit masters to take new customers on board. Moving on, let's talk about the central bank what it said that the payment service provider had violated a 2018 order directing payments data to be stored in India. This would allow the regulator unfettered supervisory access to payment details. US-based payment service provider have lobbied aggressively against the 2018 directive saying such a move would increase their cost of doing business in India. Now, data is the next future. Data is the current, present and the next future. So data is gold standard now. Data needs to be, have a proper data structuring center in the country itself when it comes to India. This was an order by the RBI and masters did not comply with this. While Visa, the Visa card, the Visa payment system did comply with this, but Masters didn't. So, whatever vacuum has been created by Masters' departure from India, supposedly, it will be captured by Visa. It will take about two months, according to some analysts, to issue cards. Whatever vacuum has been created by the departure of Masters will be taking two months for Visa to cover. Now, if we talk about the background of it. We will discuss three things here. Shri Krishna Committee report, also accordingly Data Protection Bill 2018 and Data Draft National E-Commerce Policy Framework. Shri Krishna Committee report said that data is the next future. Data is supposed to have a certain structuring. Data which is critical in nature should be processed in India and whatever data is being transferred across the borders should have proper safeguards. And also, if we talk about data protection bill, it, of course, emphasized the right to privacy. It emphasized the right of the private individuals to have a control on their data. Also, to have a data protection authority, which have, has proper supervisory controls over such institutions which deal with personal data. And also, if we talk about draft national e-commerce policy, it talked about that data centers should be given infrastructure status so that new incentives could be provided. So all these three committees, reports, framework, the draft national e-commerce uh, also suggested that a proper two-year sunset 
period was also provided before the localization actually takes place. Everything was set in, but still masters did not comply with the norms in India. Let's talk about the impacts. The impacts, if we talk about the current users, there is none. There will be no impact on existing MasterCard's customers. And of course, if we talk about this is the third US company to face RBI ban after American Express and Diners Club. Now, this will of course have a, a negative impact on the bilateral relations until and unless no consensus is reached upon before the 22nd of July. Also, it is the second largest credit card issuer in India after Visa. Keep that in mind. And it also has the second largest number of MasterCard staff globally and in India as well. It has already created an investment of $1 billion in India and it was also trying to create another $1 billion in investment in India. What Masters is suggesting that if the data of India is cut off from the global scenario from the world, it will be having a negative impact on the trend, on the world trend and also India would not be able to align its data with the trend of the world. Let's move on and talk about what is data localization. Now data localization is the practice of storing data on any device that is physically present within the borders of the country where the data is generated. And as of now, most of these data are stored in a cloud outside India. So when a customer and a bank, they have a transaction through a card, it is stored in the payment system cloud. And that is why Masters makes all the finance companies, financial institutions and banks who have a partnership with Masters with who their banks and financial institutions have their partnership with, they sign this contract that whatever data is generated, it will be in the cloud. And Masters was saying that we were continually having a talk and we were trying to reach to a consensus with RBI when it came to providing details of whatever data was being transferred to overseas. But RBI did not. RBI took a tough stance here. Also, localization mandates that companies collecting critical data about consumers must store and process them within the borders of the country. And this was also suggested in the uh, data protection bill where it suggested that Indian government, the central government should also categorize data accordingly like the critical, non-critical data in order to process the critical data in the, within the premises of India only. Also, moving on, if we talk about the advantage of data localization, there are many. Like it secures citizens' data and provides data privacy and data sovereignty from foreign surveillance. Unfettered supervisory access to data will help Indian law enforcement ensure better monitoring and ensures national security by providing ease of investigation to Indian law enforcement agencies as they currently need to rely on mutual legal assistance treaties to obtain access to data. It will give local governments and regulators the jurisdiction to call for the data when required. Data centers, industries are expected to benefit due to the data localization which will further create employment in India, greater accountability from firms like Google, Facebook about the end use of data and minimizes conflict of jurisdiction due to cross-border data sharing and delay in justice delivery in case of data breach. If we talk about the payments and settlement system in India, the vision 2019 to 2021. By the theme Empowering Exceptional E-Payment Experience, the vision document aims at empowering every Indian with access to a bouquet of e-payments option that is safe, secure, convenient, quick and affordable. And in order to give a boost to the Digital India Initiative, this move was taken. Also, with its 36 specific action points and 12 specific outcomes, it also aims to achieve highly digital and cash-like society through the goalposts of competition, cost-effectiveness, convenience and confidence. The vision document has envisaged four times growth in digital transaction in two years. Payment systems like UPI, IMPS are expected to register average annualized growth of over 100% and NEFT at 40% over the vision period. And after the commencement, after the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, the importance of data could not be underemphasized. As we try to build our relations in the day-to-day -day business with cashless. If we talk about the financial relation, being cashless is one of the things which has been propelled by the COVID-19 pandemic. So, of course, which could have been achieved, the amount of transaction digital in nature could have been achieved in the five years, has already been achieved in the last two years. 
Also, a 35% growth has been targeted in the use of digital modes of payment for the purchase of goods and services through an increase in debit card transactions at point of sale terminals during the vision period. No specific target has been considered by the vision document for reducing cash in circulation. The document talks about creating customer awareness, setting up 24 into 7 helpline, and self-regulatory organization for system operators and service providers, among others. Certain challenges are infesting the data localization practices, like maintaining multiple local data centers that may lead to significant investment in infrastructure and higher costs for global companies. That is what Master said. Master said that Visa has already complied with this, with this with these rules but masters hasn't visa has so masters says that we need to create an infrastructure in the country which needs more and more millions and hundreds and millions of investment would be needed for it also infrastructure in india for efficient data collection and management is also lacking splinter net or fractured internet where the domino effect of protectionist policy can lead to other countries following suit even if the data is stored in the country the encryption keys may still remain out of reach of national agencies. Forced data localization can create inefficiencies for both businesses and customers. It can also increase the cost and reduce the availability of data development or data dependent services. Let's talk about the way forward. There is need to have an integrated long term strategy for policy creation for data localization. And one thing that you need to keep in mind as a civil servant aspirant, that civil services aspirant, that we always need to have a balanced approach. Banning something, putting an end to something, forcing something is not the way to go. We need to have a constant consensus building or diplomatic relation with such a huge company like Masters. We need that. So, something could be, of course, developed, something could be, of course, concluded when two people sit on the table and talk about the solution. Also, if we talk about adequate infrastructure and adequate attention need to be given to the interest of India's information technology enabled services, and business process outsourcing industries which are thriving on cross-border data flow so if we talk about our question look at it do you think the indian government's intent towards data protection lie in favor of data localization you have to critically analyze this so that's it for today tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment until then stay updated and thank you so much for watching